Panzer Kampfwagen 5 Panther is a legendary World War II era German medium tank. All major production models of the Panther family are present in our game. They are a series of vehicles linking the latest Panther 4s to the first German post-war MBT, the Leopard. The chassis of the Panther was used to build quite a few combat vehicles of other types, many of which can also be found in War Thunder. But let's start from the very beginning. Battlefield reports detailing clashes with the new Soviet tanks, the KV and the T-34, forced the Germans to double down on the work to create the next German medium tank. By May 1942, a design by Mann finally won the official contract over their competitor, a tank designed by Daimler-Benz. The Panther still had a long way to go, though. The team behind the project had to create and finalize different key parts to launch production to get rid of the project's teething problems. All of that, as well as the production of the first 200 tanks, took another full year. The first Panther, produced from January to September 1943, was called the Panzer V Ausf D. The first model was somewhat of a rushed design, failing to live up to expectations during Operation Citadel. And even though in the game you don't have to deal with most of its flaws, like a very unreliable power unit, one of them, namely the low turret traverse speed, is something that you'd have to get used to. If it comes down to CQC, you'd better have a contingency plan or two, yeah, I'm just saying. The tank can reach the impressive speed of 50 kph, but at the same time has a max speed of up to 4 kph when going in reverse. That's one of the major flaws of all Panthers. On the other hand, all Panthers are armed with the same gun, a very good 75mm KWK-42 cannon. The key feature of this weapon is its high muzzle velocity, translating into good penetration capabilities. On that front, it's even better than the guns found on the Tiger or the Pershing. At the same time, there isn't much explosive filler in your main shell, so try to snipe out enemy ammo racks or enemy gunners. The gun has a depression angle of minus 8 degrees, meaning that you can use features of the terrain to your advantage to fire from cover. The tank is fitted with a binocular gun sight and has a smoke grenade discharger mounted on the turret. There were 842 Panther Ds made over a span of nine months. The design had a lot of problems that needed solving, but it also clearly had a lot of potential. The next tank of the series is the Panther A. It was given a new turret with a new cupola. Furthermore, the tank was fitted with a more powerful engine and an upgraded turret traverse drive enabling a faster turret traverse rate of 24 degrees per second. Vehicles of this variant were given the simpler monocular sight with magnification of up to five times, and a grenade launcher capable of setting up a smoke screen. With this model, you also gain access to an APC-R, even though the regular APC-BC round would probably still be your bread and butter anyway. The tank was also outfitted with a ball mount for its hull machine gun, replacing the rectangular letterbox pistol port. Finally, most surfaces of the tank were covered in zimmerit, a paste-like coating preventing magnetically attached anti-tank mines from sticking to the vehicle. Ironically, Germans were the only ones using magnetic anti-tank mines in numbers. Between August 1943 and June 1944, German factories produced 2,200 Panthers aus A. All changes to the design were introduced incrementally, often with big delays. The work of German engineers being complicated by Allied bombings, as well as interministerial bickering. The next major modification that saw the light of day was the Panther Ausf G. Coming with new chassis pannier side armor, sloped at 29 degrees instead of 40 degrees. The thickness in the armor was also increased from 40 millimeters to 50 millimeters, making the tank heavier. To compensate for that, 
This Panther was given a slightly thinner LFP. Some vehicles of this type also had their mantlets outfitted with a chin guard to stop enemy shells ricocheting off the bottom of the mantlet into the roof of the chassis. The engine of the Panther was previously prone to overheating, so an engine governor was added, making the tank slightly less mobile overall, and also cutting turret traverse speed down to 20 degrees per second. Another change was that the team behind the new model removed the driver's armored vision port, instead giving him a pivoting traversable periscope covered by an armored rain shield. Finally, from September 1944 onwards, Germans stopped applying Zimmerit to their vehicles and the tanks were delivered to the front line unpainted. Panzer units were expected to apply their own camouflage designs. The tanks of this type were produced right up to the very end of the war, with almost 3,000 vehicles made between March 1944 and April 1945. The last proper Panther found in the tree is the Panther F. Its hull is almost identical to the one of the Ausf G. The only difference is that it has a somewhat sturdier roof with 25 millimeters of armor there. The tank's so-called Schmalturm, or the narrow turret, is completely new though. It weighed less while providing better protection and made the area of the frontal armor smaller while not affecting the internal crew space. Even better than that, actually, the new internal placement design allowed for a faster loading process. This new Panther's mantlet looks somewhat similar to the one of the Tiger II. Its cupola is now a bit lower, and there are two spherical bulges on both upper front sides of the turret designed to accommodate a Zeiss rangefinder which is really helpful when engaging targets at considerable range. On the other hand, the turret traverse speed is even slower this time around, only 15 degrees per second. There is also a very special case of the Ersatz M10. This is a Panther G that was modified to mimic the appearance of the American M10 tank destroyer. It had to drop its cupola and its side skirts, and adopt the American colors and white stars. All in all, there were five Panthers modified this way. All that effort was in vain, though. By the time Ersatz M10s went to battle, captured German soldiers had already revealed their existence to the Allies. Not to mention that the vehicle's distinctive wheels and its muzzle recoil compensator were still dead giveaways. In the end, American forces had no difficulty identifying these vehicles and stopping them. Germans aren't the only ones that use Panthers, though. Take a look at the T-5. That's the Soviet designation for a captured Panther Alfs A. What makes it different from the original vehicle is that there are only two side skirts left. There are no front fenders and the tank has no access to German APCRs and smokes. The T-5 has a historical camo. You get a standard German tan hull with a Soviet green turret. White markings show that this is a Panther belonging to the unit of Guards Leutnant Sotnikov. On the 18th of August 1944, three vehicles of the 5th SS Panzer Division Viking got bogged down in a swamp. Just a few days later, they were captured and then used in combat against their previous owners. The French were also known to make use of captured panthers. One of them, called Dauphine, can be found in the French tech tree. This is a Panther G without side skirts and with a regular mantlet covered in Zimmerit paste. This panther, despite being a part of the French army, still bears German colors which might be a bit confusing on the battlefield. Watch out for the aforementioned aspects of its appearance and the few French markings that are actually there. Also, the base design of the Panther was used to produce one of the most terrifying German tank destroyers of World War II era, the Jagd Panther. Good front armor, decent mobility, an excellent Pack 43 cannon, 
but you probably already know all that, especially if you watched our video on German SPGs. If not, you should. It's a good watch, we promise. All in all, the only serious flaws of the Panther tank family are A. A rather slow reverse and B. Thin side armor. If we're speaking about fire rate, Panther's cannon is on par with the Soviet 85mm gun and just a bit slower than the British 17 pounders. These tanks are also pretty fast, given their considerable weight and the time of their production, of course. They also drive very smoothly, allowing you to consistently land your shots on the move. Basically, thanks to their excellent guns, sturdy front armor, and advantageous elevation angles, Panthers make for very capable long-range and mid-range combatants. Which Panther is your favorite? Tell us, please, in the comments below. And boom! See you in battle!